Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of Micro Fiqh. In today's episode, we'll be discussing a very important issue. It's the issue of ritual purity. Ghusl, your entire worship relies on you being ritually pure. Ghusl is one way of purifying your body and your soul. In some cases, ablution or wudu is just not enough. So when do you need to perform ghusl? Firstly, if you enter into the state of Janaba. Secondly, if you touched a deceased person who has not been spiritually purified. Thirdly, for sisters, a menstrual cycle, istihada or nifas. And fourthly, if you have made an oath to perform ghusl for whatever reason. There are other ghusls that are mustahab or recommended to perform, such as your Friday ghusl. Now I want you to remember something. If you have to perform ghusl and you go and have a shower and forget to actually perform it, then you'd have to go back and perform the ghusl. A shower does not equal ghusl. If you haven't performed ghusl when you are in need of performing ghusl, there are some things that you can do. For example, you can't touch the words of the Holy Quran or the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any language. And it's better not to touch the names of the ma'sumin. You cannot enter Masjid al-Haram or Masjid al-Nabawi even if it is just to walk in one door and exit the other like you can in other masjids. You can't walk into a masjid and stay there. And as an obligatory precaution, you can't do that in the shrines of the Ahlul Bayt. You can't enter a masjid to put something in or take something out. And you can't say the ayahs that have an obligatory sajda in them. There are also some things that are makruh or not recommended for you to do until you perform the ghusl, such as the following items. Now you must have performed your ghusl where it is obligatory for you to do so in order to perform your worship, such as your obligatory prayers, your hajj, and such like. Now you don't have to have your ghusl for Salatul Mayyit when you perform it, although it is highly recommended. And be sure that before you perform your ghusl that you have the right intention, which is to seek proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how do you perform your ghusl? There are two ways, either tartibi or irtimasi. Let's have a look at each one. Let's divide the body into three parts. Part A, which is the head and neck, part B, which is the right hand side of the body, and part C, which is the left hand side of the body. You would start off by washing part A, the head and neck. You can go a little bit over to make sure that you've covered all areas. Then you would go on to part B, the right hand side of the body. And again, go a little bit over the edge to make sure that you've covered all areas. And finally, part C, the left hand side of your body. Make sure you've covered all areas and go a little bit over again to ensure you've covered all obligatory areas. And don't forget, you need to wet all your nooks and crannies. By the way, Ayatollah Sistani Allah, considers part B and C as one part. Now here's something really important. When you are about to perform your ghusl on a part of the body, make sure you move it away from the flow of water and then put it back in with the intention of ghusl. And likewise for part B and part C. The second way to perform your ghusl is when you dive into a pool of water. So it's called irtimasi. Now there's two ways to do this. You can either jump in or slowly walk down into the water until your whole body is immersed in water. Here are some extra notes about your ghusl. Water must reach all parts of the outer body. So for example, it doesn't need to reach inside the nostrils or inside the ears. Make sure you remove all obstacles to water reaching your skin. For example, oils or band-aids or cement or anything like that, that might prevent the water from reaching your skin. Now here's something else that's very important with regards to your ghusl. If you have performed your ghusl of janaba, you are not allowed to perform wudu to go to your prayers. The ghusl of janaba actually covers for you and it is forbidden for you to perform wudu. This was Microfiqh giving you a little dose of fiqh wherever you are.